Smallville is my least favorite superhero media. Most people think Superman is boring. He's overpowered, he's not interesting, this turns people away before they get a chance to know the character. This show says we're not doing a Superman show. You'll get to know Clark Kent first. In theory, I like that. Anyone who says Superman is too powerful, not this guy. He's fast and strong, but he doesn't have his other powers yet. The show's motto was no flights, no tights, reinforcing their mission to make people care about the character without the flashier elements of the comics they thought were getting in the way of people caring. But they made Clark boring and dull. This is not Tom Welling's fault. Watch any interview with him, he's funny and charismatic. When Welling plays not Clark, like Lionel Luther in Clark's body, he's doing a good job. He's not a bad actor. But when he's regular Clark, I don't get much from him. He's got a thing for Lana Lang, he wants to play football, and he wants to know more about his heritage, but those are all basic. I don't know much about him. Football is his only interest for nearly four seasons. When he says he's interested in journalism, I was shocked because he never showed interest in it before. Chloe had, but he only tagged along because he's the main character and we need him to fight crypto freaks. The producers wanted us to care about Clark, but they forgot to give us reasons to care. Making him an outsider who doesn't fit in is a good start. We all like an underdog, but we need more to root for. The show relies on comic lore like Clark is a journalist. Everyone knows that, so this Clark has to be interested in journalism. But the show also says, ignore that comic crap. We're rebuilding Superman from the ground up. You can't have it both ways. Either go full comic or do what you're setting out to do. In which case, don't have Clark be a journalist. Have him be a firefighter or a private detective. Don't use the comics as a crutch if you're slapping them in the face. The producers felt ashamed of doing a comic book show, so they pulled as far back from that as possible. You're adapting and modernizing the Superboy comics from the 1940s. Stories that had a hero going on adventures, fighting bad guys. There was bombast with giant robots or aliens, but no flights, no tights means they can't do that. This comes from when the show came out. Batman and Robin came out in 1997, and a lot of people didn't like it. So the lesson learned was audiences don't like colorful bombast. Now heroes wear black leather, and not a single color is to be seen. Smallville hit screens four years later, and superheroes are starting to reform their reputation on the screen, but everyone is dipping their toes in the water after Batman and Robin. Superman won't wear a costume, won't use one of his coolest powers everyone would love to see. If this show came out after Iron Man or Captain America, they would have endeavored to make us care about Clark without cutting off some of the most recognizable elements of the comics the show is adapting. Captain America is a good person, some would say a Boy Scout, and the movies made people care about him. This show could have done that. I understand the rationale behind no flights, no tights, even if I don't agree with it, but it's so antithetical to Superman. Budget-friendly superheroes were nothing new in 2001, but there's a difference in inability to make something work on screen and unwillingness to put something on screen. Even when Smallville started using comic booky stuff like kryptonite-powered cyborgs, the Justice League, the Justice Society, the Legion of Superheroes, Mirror Universes, secret government organizations, the Fourth World, they still maintain their no flights, no tights rule. Well, for Clark, Supergirl, Bizarro, Martian Manhunter, Hawkman, they can fly, but not our main character, who, in another time and place, is supposed to be the forerunner for all superheroes. But sure, let's let him be the last person on the planet who masters flight. The idea of Superman, and that's what this series was by the end, Clark works at the Daily Planet, he's in a relationship with Lois, a secret identity, and fights for truth, justice, and other stuff, there's no beating around the bush, this was a Superman series with everything except Superman. Superman hiding in the shadows is so against what Superman is. Superman is an inspirational figure. He smiles at the camera after saving somebody because he has nothing to hide. He trusts humanity, even when we don't deserve it. That it took him eight seasons to put on a costume, and even then, it was this costume, and he was hiding while doing his Superman thing, that boggles my mind. How would I introduce the costume? Bearing in mind, when the series first began, it was more or less grounded in reality. Yeah, you had superhumans, but not superheroes. So what is a good real worldy explanation for why Clark would put on a costume when he does his heroing? Could be as simple as his regular clothes get torn and burnt up when he comes across people who need saving. So he and Martha make something from his blanket he had with him in the ship as a baby. Whatever unearthly material it's made of, it's much more durable than earth clothes. Clark wears it under his civvies on the chance he sees a kid in a burning building who needs rescuing. At first, it's just a plain red and blue ensemble, no symbol. But after a while, Clark thinks it'd be a good idea to give his rescuees something to focus on besides his face when he's saving them. When Clark starts investigating these glyphs in the Kawachi Caves, and he meets Dr. Swan, who knows more about Krypton than he does, and takes a look at some of his notes, Clark decides to use a recurring symbol he sees. But the symbol serves another purpose. By now, Clark spent a couple of years encountering crypto freaks, and even though he never set out to stop them in particular, his adventures have always been more
more along the lines of, I see danger, I need to do something to help, like when Lex accidentally drove into the lake and Clark had to save him in the first episode. But whether he seeks them out or not, he is this world's first line of defense against people who will use their abilities to harm others. So this is a sort of back off, pal, you don't want to mess with me, I'm one of the good guys. You know, Golden Age Superman wasn't afraid to lay down the law on those who needed it laid down. So maybe this Clark can be a little like that. Not a bully, but a stern protector. But also, Clark is optimistic. Maybe not all these crypto freaks are unstable lunatics. Maybe he'll meet one who likes his mission and wants to help him. Maybe it'll be another Kryptonian who knows the language and understands what that symbol means. As much as he wants this to be a caution label to the bad guys, he wants it to be an open hand of friendship to potential allies, if that makes sense. Once it becomes clear this is more than I need sturdier clothes, Jonathan will question this and say, Clark, there are people out there who will want to take you away from us if they find out what you can do and where you came from. That's why we kept it a secret for so long. This conversation turns to maybe Clark should wear a mask to keep himself and his loved ones safe. But Clark is firm on that. No, I want people to trust me, and some part of them won't if I'm hiding my face. But a public superhero who doesn't cover his face and only his glasses disguise him doesn't work in the modern- Shut up. Nobody cares when Bloodsport falls 100 stories and doesn't even twist his ankle. Nobody cares the staff at Hogwarts has literal truth serum, and they don't bother vetting new staff members after a few dangerous teachers get hired. The Flash had 100 seasons on television, and a guy with a freeze gun poses a threat to a guy who can run faster than the speed of thought. Nobody questions where the Ninja Turtles get the money to pay for all that pizza. How many of y'all questioned it when Bruce Wayne broke his back and got it fixed over the weekend, but Barbara Gordon still got to hang out in that sweet wheelchair for another two decades? Or when she did finally get uncrippled in the new 52 comics, DC's perfect opportunity to wipe the slate clean and say this Barbara had never been paralyzed, but no, this version of the character apparently was paralyzed at one time, somehow got cured, and this process isn't widely available to other victims of paralysis throughout the world. I don't want to hear from anyone who is suddenly unable to suspend their disbelief when it comes to Superman. There are many explanations for how Clark can keep his secret. He feigns a higher-pitched voice. He slouches and wears baggy clothes with messed up hair. The glasses dilute his piercing blue eyes. People see Clark and say, in the right light, he kind of looks like Superman. <laughs> kind of like how Riz Ahmed looks like Omid Abtahi, but they're not the same dude. Nobody thinks they are. Even if Jimmy Olsen gets a shot of the red-blue blur and sees a slight resemblance between him and his new co-worker, Jimmy won't think twice about it. I've always liked the idea that Clark's absorption of yellow sunlight took years to develop his powers. So when he was a little kid, his eyesight wasn't great, so he got glasses. By the time he's a freshman in high school, he's fast and strong, but he doesn't have godlike power. So he still wears his glasses when he's not saving lives. He wears glasses not as a way to throw people off, but for a long time, he genuinely needed them. When his various vision powers start to manifest, he finds he doesn't need them anymore. But by now, he's already gotten in a habit of saving lives. So if he discards his glasses, he fears that might make it easier for people to recognize him. And when the conversation turns to Jonathan suggesting Clark wear a mask, you just steal the scene from Superman Birthright, which would have been coming out right as Clark would have been taking his superheroing more seriously in Smallville. If people can't accept that, they probably can't accept Kryptonians can fly, shoot fire from their eyes, and bend steel with their hands either. These things are just part of Superman. If you try to remove them, you don't really have a Superman story, do you? You have a not-subtle Dawson's Creek knockoff, which is clearly what they were going for with all the relationship drama, but they also wanted the comic book nerds. It's just they didn't actually want to give the comic book nerds anything close to what they wanted. But I think this would have worked well with what they were trying to do, while also being a better representation of Superman. That's my idea. I'm sure fans would hate it. For all I know, I'm talking nonsense. The show lasted 10 years, so clearly a large group of people liked what they were doing. Otherwise, it wouldn't have gone on that long. But what did you guys think? I hope you liked it, and if you did, I do this sort of thing all the time. So check out some of my other videos. Until next time, have a good one.